What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to the bench for our final episode here on our Hasegawa MC205. Today, we are finishing up this awesome bird and putting a wrap there on Season 9 of Ben Bills with Joe. Now, last time, we went ahead and came in here and did all the painting. We used some Vallejo model air colors. We went ahead and used some masks for those smoke rings. We overcoated everything with a gloss coat of future, and now we are ready to go ahead and start our decaling process. Once that is done, we can come back in, overcoat the decals once more with future, and then come in and do some weathering. So we've got a lot cut out for us today, guys, but we're almost done, so let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, the decals look pretty decent. There's not a lot of decals, so we're going to go ahead and jump in here. We're going to work with scheme number two. We're going to go ahead and cut out all the decals, use a typical microsol microset combination, get some nice hot water, and just start applying the markings. So let's jump in there, guys, to our first time labs let's get this party started let's finish off our mc205 We are back and as you can see the decals are on even though I had a little trouble getting them off the backing We eventually got them all placed and overcoated with future and now we're going to move over to our very first layer of weathering and This is the AK pan liner the color for green and brown camo and instead of just kind of slathering it all over the model Like I typically would do we're going to go ahead and start with a little bit of precision paneling tracing I don't know if this is going to work any better than my typical procedure, but I wanted to try it out. And this way, I conserve a little bit of wash and add a little bit of subtle shading here and there. And once this is dry, we're going to wipe it off. I want to add in a little bit more color variation. So a little bit of diluted oil paint through my airbrush should do the exact effect I'm looking for. And then we can come in with our Tamiya Paneline accents and then our weathering powder and then eventually flat coat the whole thing. And hopefully we should be good with the majority of this model. So let's get back in there, guys. We're almost done. Let's finish off the weathering and see what we can do.
right, as you can see, we are back and we've got our weathering more or less done with this model. We've flat coated everything, sealed it all away. We did a mixture of panel line accent wash, AK panel liners, weathering powder, and some oil paint shot through our airbrush. So that is it. We are good to go. And that means we need to start adding in some of the little fidgety parts like the aerial wire, paint up the side lights on the wings, unmask the canopy, just last little bit of finishing touches. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a drill bit here and go ahead and make a little divot, clean it up a bit with our exacto knife and we're going to use a bit of easy line to simulate that wire. Once the hole is drilled, we're going to take a little bit of our super glue, just drop it right in there with my custom applicator. Then we're going to take our easy line and we're going to feed it into that little dimple that I just created. Once that's in there, we can take some of our accelerator. We're going to drop a little drop right on there and it should be ready to go within seconds which is awesome. Now, once it's already in there though, just to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere, I'm gonna grab a little bit more super glue and just drop it right on top of there to make sure that it's not gonna pop out when I go ahead and I stretch this to hook over the front aerial. And it's the same process for the top of the aerial mast itself. Though I don't have to drill any holes in this time, I'm just gonna put down a little bit of super glue on the very tip top of that, grab my easy line, stretch it down across and over the top of that, and then we can go ahead and secure it with a little bit of super glue and our accelerator. Again, I wanna make sure it doesn't slip off the side, so that is pretty decent right there. We'll take a little bit of our accelerator, drop a drop right on top of that. And again, within seconds, we're good to go. I really do like accelerator. It can make the bond a little brittle, but if you're not moving it, I think you're okay. Now I'm also going to go ahead and drill a little bit of a dimple right here in this connection point to the fuselage. And I'm not going to have to worry too much about it, but I do want to have a little bit of a dimple so that the glue, when I settle it in there, it can flow into something and not just sit on top of the model. Then a little bit of our super glue right there. And then again, of course, we got to grab our accelerator and drop only one drop right on top of that. And then we'll just trim off the excess and we are good to go. Adding aerials can be a bit tedious, but with some super glue and accelerator, you can get the job done decently. Sometimes it's very frustrating, but I think it looks awesome. So we're going to finish that off and add a few insulators here and there to make it look a little bit more realistic. Pretty much the last thing we have to go ahead and do is add in the corner lights on the wings. We have left is going to be red and right is going to be blue. So I got some clear paint for that. I used Tamiya and Mr. Color. We're going to drop that in there, paint those up, and we will be mostly done with the majority of the aircraft. Not too shabby. And lastly, guys, we're going to pop open that canopy and we're going to go ahead and clean up the connection points and glue the canopy down so that we have it open. That also means we need to unmask all the different clear parts. So that's going to be a little tedious, but we take our time. It'll be fine. And then, of course, I want to do a little bit of touch up painting here along the rails to get into the cockpit. Once that is good, we can add a little bit of cockpit color to that, glue the canopy down and yeah, we'll be finished off. So let's go ahead and wrap this up real quick and let me show you guys what we came up with. So we are back and everything is all finished up. We finished off the canopy off camera because, well, you've seen that done a hundred times, so it's not that big of a deal. But I thought we'd go ahead and show you guys the end product of the Hasegawa 148 scale Maki MC205. And honestly, it was a good kit. I had a blast with it. So let me go ahead and pull it out here and here we go. So this is it. I got to tell you, I had a little bit of silvering problems with the decals. Only the ones on the top of the wings though. And I think it was mostly because it's a lot of clear film. And that can be a little trouble sometimes. Even with Microsoft Micros Head. Undersurface is fine. We've got some streaks coming off of that center section. And yeah, I think everything kind of tied in nicely. So let's go ahead and zoom in for a quick close up. And I'll show you guys some of the details. So here we go, starting at the nose, everything went together beautifully. I added in that little vent cover right there, which is a nice addition. As you can see, I did airbrush some of the exhaust coming off of those stacks. I used NATO black along with a little bit of sky gray just for a bit of a gray tint. I did not like how I painted the white band. For some reason, either was just the paint was too thick or something, but it did not want to go ahead and sit flush with the rest of the paint. So it has a little bit of a step. I don't like that. It's not one of my favorite parts, but otherwise it did go together decently. I don't have any issues with the part fit. The other side, of course, has more of our exhaust standing with NATO black and a little bit of that gray color. My references did show a tiny little hole right here on the side that did leak some oil. So I added in a little bit of oil coming off of that. But otherwise, I didn't want to go too far. I want to stay a little bit cleaner. But I did try to focus my weathering on the center portion of the aircraft undersurface as well and do some streaking and some gun dust. I left the side of the wings more or less untouched. Just a little bit of panel line accent. Everything from this panel line in. I tried to make it a little bit dirtier. I don't know if it really worked, but I like how it's turned out. So yeah, can't really complain. Using those smoke rings was great. I had a lot of fun with that and we got those done up. And of course, we've got our aerial installed there, as you can see. We did add a little bit of white paint for the insulator between the tail and of course the mast and painted up that little insulator at the bottom fuselage as if it was rubber. So a little bit of black there and we're good to go. You'll also notice I did include this tensioning string right here. Go ahead and keep that canopy open as it would have been in real life. Pretty simple glue here on the fuselage, glue 
glue on the canopy, stretch the easy line, put it into place, drop some accelerator, you're good to go. So that is it, guys. We are done. Season number nine of Ben Builds with Joe is finished. We have our Maki MC205 all rounded up. And it was a really, really fun model. Painting on those smoke ring camouflages and using my Cricut cutter to cut out these masks was a lot of fun and very new for me. So I had a blast with that. My only drawback is I ended up using some Vallejo. And even though the color looks fine, it was a little bit of a thicker paint. I wasn't able to get a thin, even coat as I would have liked. But again, at three feet, you don't really notice it. And I'm pretty happy with being able to experiment with these smoke ring masks homemade off my Cricut cutter. But that is it, guys. Like I said, we are finished up with the MC205. Big shout out to Joe for building up an MC205 with me. His paint job, guys, was super difficult, and I think he absolutely knocked it out of the park. And in fact, I would love to go ahead and try that out myself using some of his techniques and just see what I can come up with with another 205. But that'll be sometime in the future for sure. Until our next episode, guys, you know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. Make sure to go check out Joe's channel, watch that final video, give him a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and we will see you back here for a brand new build next time on Ben Builds. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon.